Hey, what's up guys? Lauren here with Lauren Leslie Studio and in this video I'm going to be attempting to complete the 100 heads challenge. I'll post the original video and the challenge's host down below in the description so you can join in if you would like to. I am starting to fill out this handmade sketchbook that I created and found myself and if you're curious about how to learn how to make your own handmade sketchbook, check out this video. Okay, so this is the sketchbook that I made myself, did the book binding and everything. And for the first 10 heads, I'm just going to be using this Derwent set of graphite that I have had since college. So for, I've probably had these for like, I don't know, maybe over 20 years now, which is crazy to say. But they're still going strong, so let's get started. So like I mentioned, I'm just using these graphite pencils that I've had since college and really they've just lasted me a long time, but I honestly don't even do that much graphite drawing anymore. So I love having a challenge like this that really kind of just took me back to the basics of sketching and using graphite pencil. And yeah, it was just really fun to go back and kind of pick up some of those fine art skills that I really developed during college. And now as a surface pattern designer, I'm still drawing and of course doing art, but not in this exact same way, in such a foundational way with, again, graphite pencil. Um, I might do a quick sketch, but it's not really the realism style that I'm going for here. And I guess that's kind of the point of this whole challenge is to get better at drawing faces. So one of my goals here was to capture likeness and I think I did an okay job of that. I've watched a lot of these 100 heads challenges here on YouTube and I definitely found that while I don't think I'm maybe the worst <laughs> at this challenge, I certainly am not the best either, but I think I did an okay job. It was nice to, you know, again, go back and try to capture the likeness, but I think with this first head, I was just being way too precious. I can't even believe I'm using the blending stump here. It's just like, okay, Lauren, this does not have to be a perfect portrait, but I think in this challenge, kind of just doing that first head is gonna be one of the biggest challenges, that and also finishing. So with these heads, you know, it's supposed to be 10 heads in 10 days. I definitely did not stick to that, but I did want to have a plan of, you know, kind of having this list of different materials that I could try per 10 heads. So the first 10, of course, I wanted to do in graphite pencil and just kind of go back to the basics of drawing and use my kneaded eraser and, you know, just be able to erase mistakes if I was needing to, um, and then kind of get more and more advanced with materials and art supplies and just really try to do portraits in different art supplies and kind of challenge myself in that way. So yeah, I definitely took way too long on this first head and am now headed to the second head and I'm feeling a little better like, okay, I can do this. I remember how to draw <laughs> realistically. I can draw faces because yeah, I just haven't drawn faces in such a long time and that's just one of the reasons why I, I was interested in this challenge. I used to draw a lot of people. When I was in college, my major was actually oil painting and I did a lot of portraits. Um, pretty much all of my subject matters were f the figure. And so I was interested in seeing, you know, if my skills were as, you know, were rusty or if I could pick it back up. And it is kind of like riding a bike. They were a little bit rusty, of course, I can tell my realism style is not as great as it was when I was in college and pretty much drawing every day, but you know, that's life. I, <laughs> I don't want you to feel bad if you are not able to create this challenge in 10 days. 10 days is just, man, that's freaking impossible. I don't know what people are thinking. Like, <laughs> at least for my life, I have a full-time job. I also have a baby and you know, I want to see my friends and family sometimes. <laughs> so I just don't have all the time in the world to draw all day. But if you're able to complete this challenge in 10 days, more power to you. I think that's incredible. I think that's amazing. And I really wish I had that much time to draw. So I'm a little jealous, <laughs> but in this video, I'm really just focusing on these first 10 heads in graphite, and then we'll move on to the next group. So I really wanted to, you know, really stick to some drawing mediums 
in this kind of first bulk of heads and the graphite is just so forgiving that's why i felt really comfortable using it first of course you can erase and you can sketch really loosely and really lightly and then go back on top and make darker marks and darker shading so really i was just focused on getting a very light touch down first and making sure that my proportions were correct and trying to really focus on getting the likeness down so yeah i mean Again, with this blending stump, Lauren, I don't know what I was thinking with the blending stump. <laughs> Completely not necessary. And I found that I got a lot looser when I was doing more pen and ink and charcoal and starting to graduate into some more advanced mediums. And so, yeah, this, I mean, the graphite is just so nice to kind of dip your toe and practice without feeling too precious. I mean, I definitely felt precious about my first few heads, don't get me wrong, but it felt very manageable and like something I could jump into even after pretty much years of not drawing faces in a realistic style. So it really is kind of like riding a bike and, you know, I wouldn't worry about not starting. If you are thinking about starting, you know, just jump in and go ahead. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to show anyone, but I do think it's a great way to practice. And if you don't know what to put in your sketchbook, if you're kind of just staring at that blank page, this is a great challenge to really dive into. But like I said, I could not do this in 10 days and I really had to space it out because I also just get bored. I have other things that I need to work on artistically. I have projects going but this is a challenge that I keep coming back to. I mean, and let's be real, I'm the worst at completing challenges. There's the 100 Days Project, which I've never been able to complete. <laughs> there used to be Inktober, now there's all different kinds of variations of that, and I've never really been able to finish that either. So I like to start challenges. That's kind of what I do on this channel. I start challenges, and then we'll see if we finish. <laughs> But no, I am really committed to finishing this challenge. I just don't know how long it's going to take me because I do have some other priorities in my life. Even creatively, I have other priorities of projects I need to work on for my fabric licenses and you know other surface pattern design projects. So yeah, I really loved working on this guy too. I think he was my favorite. I loved the challenge of the position of him looking straight up at the camera and it turned out to be a really beautiful portrait. I think it's just, yeah, it just turned out to be my favorite. So loved drawing this guy. I was really, really happy with him. So let's switch gears for a minute and talk about style. I do kind of feel like the entire goal of the 100 heads challenge is to capture a person's likeness. So especially for these first 10 heads, I just kind of stuck to a realism style, as you can see. But one hesitation I had with doing this challenge was exactly that, you know, that I had already learned how to do realism back in art school. And so returning to it wasn't exactly helping me develop my own unique signature art style, something that I was really trying to work on. But maybe I'll try to draw some heads in my own art style towards the end of this challenge. But as of right now, I'm just sticking to realism because that kind of seems to be the goal of this challenge to begin with. And, you know, I gave it a lot of thought, like thinking, well, should I really be even wasting my time with this when I need to be working on other things, like really developing my style? And I decided to keep going with the 100 heads challenge. And here's why. Sometimes as artists, we just have so much pressure on ourselves to create something gorgeous or important or totally original, especially when it comes to finding an art style. We want our style to be super original and just kind of to stand out from the crowd and do something different. Um, but also in a way that's, you know, expressing ourself and something that's also going to appeal to the end customer. But in order to do that, we have to tap into our flow state. And coming back to the basics of drawing in a realism style is really just a great way to do that. Sometimes artists need to unthink and just draw it out. And really going back to the basics of a realism style with graphite pencil is just something that I really didn't have to think too hard about. It was just kind of, again, I know I've said it like a bunch in this video, but it really was like riding a bike. I mean, it was just something where I didn't have to think too hard and it got me drawing. So it's just a great way to push through art block and get back in the zone. 
In my paid program, Art Style Academy, I teach a cyclical process called Explore, Create, Focus. And these are all three different stages that you go through in developing an art style. And so even when we've created our very best work, I mean, I just teach that we always have to come back to the explore stage. And drawing these 100 heads was just such a wonderful way to do that. Participating in art challenges, especially something that goes on for about 90 to 100 days, is a really great way to learn and develop your art style when you are still kind of searching for your art style or even if you're just trying to refine it. So whether it's this 100 heads challenge or a different art challenge, I do encourage you to start one in your sketchbook and come at it through kind of this lens of developing your art style. I do offer a free workshop called Sketchbooking Your Style, and I'll link that in the description. In the free workshop, we'll talk about how to fill up your sketchbook in a planned way that's kind of the step-by-step action plan in a way to develop your art style. We'll go over color palette, um, choosing a sketchbook that's right for you, collecting inspiration, and we'll also do this style exercise together where we paint four different versions of the same motif in four different styles. So the link to sign up is in the description and it's also always in the top right of my channel banner. I do want to mention that all the reference photos in this challenge, in the 100 heads challenge, can be found on a Pinterest board created by Ahmed Al Dori. And I'll link that in the description as well. He included a wide range of faces, both male and female, and some a little more androgynous, which were cool, um, as well as young and old faces, and even a lot of sculptures with these really animated facial expressions. And if I have to say, like one thing that surprised me about this challenge is that I was kind of dreading drawing these sculptures because I don't know, I just thought they like weren't very pretty <laughs> and they weren't what I would typically draw. And I just, I didn't really think I was going to get much out of that, but they actually turned out to be like the most fun to draw. They were super fun to draw and kind of these odd angles and like deep wrinkles and atypical facial expressions, some with like a mouth wide open or a crazy mustache. They kind of gave me these landmarks within the face and it was actually easier to kind of work around that and fill in the rest of the details and proportions. So I really enjoyed drawing those as well. I also want to tell you guys about this app called Grid Number. Uh, It's totally free um, to download and what you can do is insert a photo. This is just a photo that I found on Pexels to be royalty free, but you can click uh, the mode and increase the rows and the columns. You can change the color of the grid. So you can see how I increased the number of squares on the photograph. And, you know, in high school, this was something that we were initially taught to draw realism and to really use a grid to grid off a photograph and then use that as a basis to know how things stack up on the face, where things line up in relation to each other or just in the smaller square. And so if you're feeling a bit scared or you know a bit hesitant about starting this challenge because you haven't drawn people in so long and you just think you're gonna really screw it up, Starting out with a grid, even if it's just a loose grid that you slightly sketch out on your paper and then that kind of just gives you some rough guidelines to work from is a really great way to get started and to warm up. I definitely did this and used this myself, so there's no shame in it at all. And I promise as you continue drawing heads, you really won't even need it anymore, but it is just a really great way to get started and not feel like so much pressure to draw perfect lightness, especially with, if you're feeling a little bit rusty. I'm curious to know if you think drawing people is hard. You can leave me a comment and let me know if you think like drawing people is more difficult uh, than drawing something like landscapes. I personally find drawing landscapes much harder, even though there's less pressure to get that perfect likeness. No one's gonna know if you you know, didn't get the perfect scale, but you can tell on a portrait if you messed up someone's face. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like whether you prefer cooking or baking, because with baking, you have to be pretty precise with your measurements. You know, you really have to measure your cup of flour and all that kind of stuff, or it's totally gonna fail, and I've definitely butchered some baking. I don't like baking, because I always mess it up. 
And if you're going for perfect likeness when drawing the face, it's kind of the same thing as baking. But with cooking, you have a lot of room for experimentation and it's probably gonna turn out fine. Like it's very forgiving to just throw something on the stove in a big pot. My husband and I cook a lot of soups and stews and the amount of salt or what type of vegetables you throw in or, or beans or whatever, or noodles, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, it's probably gonna turn out really good no matter what you do, there's a lot of wiggle room, unlike with baking. I think a lot of people feel this way when it comes to drawing or painting landscapes versus drawing or painting people, which is funny because in the kitchen and when it comes to food, I definitely prefer cooking. Like I suck at baking, but when it comes to art, I've always preferred drawing people. Maybe I find humans more interesting, or maybe I just like the precise recipe of capturing likeness. I actually find landscapes more difficult because I just feel like there's too much information to try to draw exact likeness. Like there's no way I'm gonna be able to draw every single leaf, hello. <laughs> no way, it's not possible. Um, but blurring the effect or simplifying the full vision of the landscape somehow feels harder to me. It's kind of like how people who aren't artists think that abstract art is really easy when really it's actually a lot harder than drawing realism. So I think that's my issue. So lately that challenge and the fact that landscapes feel hard has kind of got me thinking that maybe I should practice them. Like it's kind of piqued my interest a little bit lately. And I don't know, as a subject matter, they didn't seem that interesting to me before, but I think I just kind of viewed them as something that hangs in a doctor's office waiting room or something. That's just, I thought, oh, landscapes, they're pretty, they hang on the wall, but they're not that interesting, you know, and... I just felt like they were too basic or too boring or something like that. I hope that doesn't offend you if you are a landscape artist. It's just, I was always interested in drawing people, but that, I guess, boringness I'm now discovering lays a canvas for the color and the mark making and the paint and the composition. And you really can be flexible with a landscape, just like with cooking. And that's starting to feel very interesting to me. So. Anyway, I'm terrible at painting landscapes and I cannot start a new project right now because I've got to finish the 100 heads. I'm definitely, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. And I have other things that I need to do for work, but it's, it's cooking. It's cooking in the back of my brain that, you know, maybe you'll see some landscapes. Maybe I'll do a hundred landscapes. Hey, that could be my next challenge as a treat to myself. Only if I actually finish this one. As you can probably tell, you're only getting the first 10 heads in this video, all drawn in graphite pencil. But don't worry, don't worry, I've already drawn the next 20 heads and I've filmed it, so there are more videos coming. So this is the part of the video where I ask you to subscribe and click the little notification bell so that you don't miss heads 11 through 20 and 21 through 30 and 31 through 40 and so on. For the first 30 heads, I didn't do much with color because I wanted to practice getting the shading and the value and the volumetric shapes and all the, you know, all the stuff that color kind of, I didn't want it to be too confusing. I just wanted to focus on the black and white. I also hadn't drawn in graphite pencil or charcoal, especially charcoal in years. So this was a good excuse to whip out old art supplies and go back to the basics. Then I, from there I moved on to pen and ink, which was a great challenge to up my skills because obviously you can't erase and, you know, and no, I didn't draw with graphite first. I took that ink straight to the page. So you don't want to miss that video. The footage is filmed. I have it coming. I'm working on this challenge, guys. I promise I'm not giving up. I had an original list of art supplies I wanted to try per 10 heads, like a new medium every 10 heads as you saw that list, but the list has changed a little now that I've bought new art supplies. I have a huge art haul video on my channel, so if you wanna check that out, I've bought so many art supplies. It's kind of amazing. I'm loving it. It's an addiction. Send help. <laughs> I still wanna try colored pencils, regular gouache, acrylic gouache, and watercolor, but some of the other mediums that I had listed, like dry pastels or oil pastel, I mean, I think that's just gonna change because it's just too hard to do in a sketchbook. And I really want these mediums to be sketchbook friendly and I wanna try out my new art supplies, that's the real reason. 
So for example, maybe I'll do a group of 10 heads using the Derwent drawing pencils or my new ink tints pencils that activate with water. So that's gonna be fun to play with. I've never drawn people with those. So I wanna see kind of how it works. And I was also thinking about using Posca pens for one group and perhaps alcohol markers. So let me know in the comments which mediums you'd like me to try and what you want to see. They do need to be somewhat sketchbook friendly since I'm doing this whole challenge in my sketchbook. But as long as it's not, you know, oil paint or something like that, I'm open to seeing what other mediums you guys want to see from me in this challenge. So yeah, leave me a comment and let me know.